Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning ladies and gentlemen Firstly I would like to, to thank the committee of our webinar today for inviting me to be one of the speakers for our webinar so I'm really feeling honored to be part of your webinar this morning I'm going to talk about this topic being a resilient teacher amidst pandemic but before that let me introduce myself so I'm Afrianto Daud I'm a teaching staff member of English Education Department in Faculty of Teachers Training and Education in Universitas Riau. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my presentation will be divided into three main sections. The first section deals with my reflection of what has been happening uh, during this pandemic, especially in the context of teaching and learning. And then the next sections will discuss our main topic or the theme of our webinar today is about how to be a resilient teacher during this pandemic situation. And then the last part of my presentation is going to talk about some examples that I have done in the context of my service to be a lecturer in Faculty of Teacher Training and Education in Universitas Riau. Okay, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, let's first start with reflection or what has happened in our education after coronavirus or after COVID outbreak in our country. I think having experienced this pandemic for almost one year, I myself think that this pandemic has broke both challenges and new opportunities for teaching and learning. Yes, pandemic has changed our life negatively in terms of limitations the pandemic has brought to our life. And we, we must stay at home most of the time, for example, and, the, and our economic situation now is, is in crisis. But I believe that pandemic also brings us some positive sides. I think this pandemic has brought us both challenges and new opportunities for teaching and learning. We know that uh, after the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, millions of schools in the world have closed, uh, which has affected 60 million students and 4 million teachers in 565,000 schools across Indonesia. So we study at home and we cannot go to campus. Almost all of our campuses are now physically closed. Only few activities are now running in our campus. And this, the school closure or campus closure uh, has been exacerbated by the problem of digital divide and as well as competency divide from the side of teachers. So this situation has led us to the situation what we call by learning loss. So learning loss is the situation when students do not really have opportunity to learn, to learn what they are supposed to learn based on the curriculum. So this is one of the uh, simulation made by some researchers from World Bank. Uh, quite recently in uh, June, I think this publication appeared, that they have projected if our school closed in four months, it will downgrade our student score in PISA. Uh, this is especially a reading score. So our uh, current score in 2018, this is 371 for reading. So the, if the school closed down, for four months, uh, student, uh, student will get lost for almost 11 points. However, this pandemic has also brought us lots of new opportunities. Uh, for me, uh, pandemic has uh, opened up some new spaces of learning, especially learning some technological skills, especially for teaching. 
And we also learn how to have some online pedagogical skill, which will be different from offline pedagogical skills. And I think also this pandemic has opened up spaces for us to have wider international networks and also more impacts on society, uh, impact that which is beyond our classroom. So I'm going to talk about this more later in the next slide. In order to make use of the opportunity given by this pandemic, we need to be a resilient teacher, everyone. So what is a resilient teacher? A resilient teacher is the one who can stay in teaching to continue to make a difference in their careers, regardless of shifts in policy, workplace situation or professional and personal circumstances. So although we are now in pandemic, uh, we cannot do life normally like before, so a resilient teacher is the one who keep continuing to make a difference. So no matter how difficult the situation is, they are still trying to do their best, helping the students to learn. Okay. So in university, we can understand that a resilient lecturer is those who can perform and serve the nation in the area of three Dharma Purguan Tinggi. Which, is, which are teaching, research, and community service. Yeah. All right, now the question is, how can we be a resilient teacher or how can we be a resilient lecturer? Ladies and gentlemen, I think these are some keywords that we need to have to be resilient in this pandemic situation. It starts from adaptability, you know, we need to have a positive mindset and we need to keep learning and we need to find support for our survival, we need to find friends, community, or professional support in or uh, out, out of campus. Uh, or in other words, we need to have network, professional network in this case. And the most important thing is creativity, because we cannot teach in the same way we used to teach before pandemic, and we have to find new ways to deal with our student in the classroom. So as far as we have this one, adaptability, mindset, and keep learning, support, network, and creativity, I believe we can survive and we can be a resilient teacher. All right, in the next slide, I'm going to talk about what I have done to be resilient or what, what kind of practices I have done in the context of uh, teaching in my university, in Universitas Riau, everyone. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my story. First, in terms of teaching, soon after pandemic, I, I understand that this pandemic is going to, to last for quite a while, maybe for one year or even more. So then I understand, oh, okay, I have to learn many new things, especially uh, technological skills, because uh, learning will be mostly online so we will have to rely on the internet. We will have to uh, rely on uh, uh, electronic devices or dig digital devices. So then I, I decided to learn some skills, especially how to conduct teaching and learning through or using learning management system. And then I learned some online learning tools as well as basic video editing skills. So I didn't go to a special workshop for this. Uh, instead, I learned by myself through YouTube. So I, I simply searched some necessary skill that I think important. Yeah, for example, basic video editing skills. Uh, I didn't have any video editing skills before, but because I understand that this skill is necessary, then I decided to learn by myself. And then I also manage my YouTube channel. I'm going to talk about this uh, in more in a bit more details later, uh, because I think YouTube at the moment is a very important and a very interesting platform that we need to explore as a lecturer. We can use it as a media for our teaching. And also in terms of assessment, mostly I practice or I conducted authentic assessment and I'm going to show you some examples of authentic assessment that I've done in my class later. These are some 
uh, online learning applications or online learning tools that I have learned. Of course, these are not not only these, but these are um, uh, some tools that I usually used for my teaching during this pandemic. Of course, you are all familiar with some of these, like Google Classroom, Zoom meeting, WhatsApp, and YouTube itself, as I said, and uh, sometimes I use Google Slide or Google Form and Google Meet. I also use Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, Quiz, Jamboard, Block, Mentimeter, and some other applications. Okay, I assume that some of you have also been familiar with this kind, with these uh, online learning applications. Now I'm going to talk uh, a bit more about my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't get a lot of subscribers yet anyway, but I found YouTube channel is a very interesting application or a, a very interesting platform for me as a media for teaching uh, during this pandemic. So because, you know, we cannot always meet our students synchronously or using face-to-face -face interaction using, uh, using uh, Zoom meeting or using Google Meet because of the problem of connection, you know, some, so some students simply cannot reach us because of they are living in rural areas, for example. So I sometimes decide to have pre-recording or pre-record material, and then I put it into my YouTube channel and I can simply share the link of my recorded materials later in my YouTube. So my student can still listen to my explanation and then later, if uh, we have another meeting, we can, uh, I don't have to repeat my explanation, we can go to discussion. Yeah, that if there is anything that it, they don't understand yet, so they can ask me. But yeah, I, I, I put some of my materials in my YouTube channel. And uh, this is uh, my YouTube analytic or statistical analytic of my YouTube last week. So in the last 10 months, my YouTube has got more than 72 viewers, uh, as you can see from this data. So that means the content that I have in my YouTube is not only beneficial for my students, but can, it can also reach you know, uh, people out of my classroom. Okay, so at the same time, it can also help you to be an exist uh, teacher uh, in a sense that you are contributing to the society with your knowledge and skills. Uh, okay, so that's about YouTube. Now, uh, as I say, in terms of assessment, I often use authentic assessment. I didn't. I did not really have uh, written tests or essay tests in my class, but mostly I use authentic assessment like project or portfolio or students' performance or asking them to write their journal entries using blog. And these are some examples of my authentic assessment. Everyone, uh, one of the assessment in my speaking three class. Uh, speaking three class consists of. Uh, the content of my my speaking three class is more about public speaking skills. So in this class, we learned, for example, how to be a master ceremony. We learn how to deliver speech in front of people, and we learn how to be a speaker or to be a presenter, and we learn to be how to be a moderator. So at the end of the class, I asked them to have or to run a project, what I call the mini seminar project. So this mini seminar project is. Uh, a seminar conducted by the students which this, with the speakers and the moderators and all uh, person involved in the seminar come from the students themselves. So they are acting like the real uh, speaker, for example. All right. Uh, well, actually this project has been done before pandemic. However, during pandemic, I also still use it. I just switched from offline seminar to be a webinar. Okay, like this. So this is the, the webinar uh, that I did last semester using Zoom. And you see, there is like rector of Nymphtas Riau. That's actually the student themselves, uh, the student herself, you know, Professor Megalestari Sofian. 
uh, she was acting like a rector, you know, delivering an opening remark in a seminar that they made. Okay. If you want to know more details about this um, mini seminar project, I have I have published an article about this in uh, this journal. You can search for the title, and you probably can see more details how I conduct this uh, this project, and what kind of rubrics that I used, and what are the challenges, and how the student respond, thing like that. You can see later in this article. All right, uh, and another project that I have in my class uh, using uh, YouTube platform, uh, this is also in my speaking class. Uh, one of the uh, activities I call is news report activities. So student active being a journalist and reporting things, what's things happening uh, in the field. So uh, they uh, are acting like uh, the real journalist and uh, being a TV anchor and then they are reporting news from, from the, the field and they put it in their YouTube channel and then it looks like the real news or the real TV news. You can also search some examples later in YouTube about this and you can see how it looks like. And I found it's really interesting and students also like it. Okay. Uh, there are some other examples of authentic assessment. I also put in uh, some examples in my YouTube channel, everyone. So if you are interested, you can also visit my YouTube channel. All right, now uh, I move on to my activities in terms of research and uh, publication. So I think everyone is very important for us, especially during this pandemic, uh, to expand our professional network. Uh, well, it's not only, of course, during pandemic, but this pandemic broke us or brings us uh, more opportunities to have expanded professional network because we, you know, most of the time we are sitting in front of our laptop and then being online. So we can browse and we can serve, uh, serving in the internet, and then we can find a lot of professional network in the internet. And then having a professional network will lead us to have a joint research and joint publication, okay? So to expand our professional uh, uh, network and as well as actually professional branding and develop our professional impact as well, I highly uh, recommend you to explore lots of professional social media in, uh, uh, in, in our life today. So social media, of course, is not only limited to Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, but I, as professional or as a lecturer in the university, I suggest you to have uh, at least some of these social media, like LinkedIn, yeah, or you have your Google Scholar account, you have your Ojit ID, and you have also your Mendeley professional network. Uh, I assume some of you have known that Mendeley also have like a social media. When you have the account, you can, can be connected with some other authors or researchers yeah, in, uh, in your expertise, within your area of expertise. And ResearchGate, yeah, ResearchGate can also open new opportunity for us to have uh, expanded professional network, okay? And Scopus ID, of course. So all of these can brings you to your professional branding or your professional image. So people will understand and will know who you are from this account. So today it's easy, you know, to find somebody, right? So if you know the name, you can simply search their social media account and you will see or who he is or who she is. Okay, these are some of my social media account. Yeah, so I have some of these. And this is actually data from ResearchGate. Uh, I started my research care account, account uh, almost uh, one year ago. And it's good to know that, for example, this is uh, the, stati the statistic of my research kit last week. It has been visited and my project or my work have been read by more than 14,000 people or almost 15,000 people from all over the world. So it's good to know, right? Your project have been read at least by some other people and when people read your work and when they are interested they might cite you some some days okay and it can of course boost your page index yeah or your google index or your research gate index or scopus index or anything 
All right. Um, collaboration. Uh, I think as a lecturer, we really understand today that we need to have collaborative project. When we are aiming to write a publication today, uh, the tendency or the trend is we need to have some collaborative authors. So having a wide professional network using this application or using this social media, I think will lead you to have a later opportunity to have collaborative project. And this is one of examples of project that I'm now doing with some other researchers from Deakin University and UP, UP Bandung. And uh, actually we, we started to have a project before pandemic, but after pandemic, we, uh, you, we keep uh, uh, collaborating and finding some issues that we can do some together. Okay, this is an example. And of course, as a lecturer, we, uh, we also need to have a community service, no matter how difficult our situation today as a lecturer, as a resilient lecturer, we need to find ways how to serve the community, to serve the society, yeah, to do community service. So uh, this is what I've been doing. Yeah, um, uh, I was uh, training teachers to how to conduct or how to write a scientific research paper and how to learn Mendeley, for example, okay? But what is more interesting for me in the context of this uh, community service that using, uh, I, I want to come back to my YouTube channel, uh, on a, you know, that you being a YouTuber or having a, a well-managed YouTube channel can also be considered as one form of community service. And the impact of our community service in this YouTube can be beyond classroom and sometimes can be uh, kind of unlimited impacts of uh, the YouTube channel itself. Why? Because, you know, when you put good things, when you, you know, when you put good contents, let's say about that you are explaining something and you share your knowledge through YouTube channel, or you, you share your uh, skills or you share your expertise in YouTube channel. And you know, your potential audience come from all over the world. And there are a lot of data uh, currently telling us that, you know, uh, the potential audience for, for YouTube at the moment can be billion, okay? Billions of audience can be your potential audience for your YouTube channel. So as far as people keep visiting your YouTube channel and your YouTube channel has good content, so it can potentially enlighten community. It can potentially educate community. It can still potentially, you know, uh, give some benefits for the society or for the community. So isn't it kind of community service itself, okay? And even from you know religious perspective, it can also be your amal jariah, right? You know what is amal jariah, right? So when we die later, as far as your YouTube channel is still there, and people still keep visiting your YouTube channel, you will still get you know reward from Allah from the thing that you have done. Isn't it interesting? Okay, everyone. So uh, to wrap it up. Yes, today we are now living in difficult situation because of COVID-19. But when we learn how to become resilient, we will learn how to embrace the beautifully broad spectrum of the human experience, as Chida Dewalt said. So we will embrace the beautifully uh, opportunities given by this pandemic for our life today. Okay? We we hope this pandemic will end soon, okay? But if this pandemic is not yet ended soon, still we can enjoy and we still we can do something different or we can still keep continuing to make a difference to serve our students, yeah, to do our job or to do our profession as a lecturer, everyone. So now the choice is on you. Yeah, by the end of the day, we understand that 
life is a choice. So whether you are going to be a resilient or not, that's your choice. At the end of the day, what is more important in our life is not what happened to us, but how we react to what's happening. So let's choose to react positively. Let's choose to react resiliently, or let's choose to be how to be resilient so that we can keep being productive during this pandemic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all. I do thank you for listening to me. Hopefully uh, there are things that can be beneficial for you after listening to my presentation. And apologize for any mistake. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.